USA Ultimate proudly presents the 2019 USA Ultimate Club National Championships. And we welcome you to Championship Sunday. The triple header begins with a women's final, a matchup that few predicted. It's a rematch of the Northeast Regional Final, Boston Brute Squad and Toronto Sixers. And it's amazing, for the first time since the year 2000, neither San Francisco Fury or Seattle Riot are in the final. Brute Squad Sixers both winning big victories in the semis yesterday. Brute holding on against Fury Sixers, smashing schwa. Welcome everybody, Evan Leffler with Megan Tormey, Ian Toner down in the field, and we begin with breaking news, shocking news. For Toronto Sixers, their top player arguably, Lauren Kimura. Megan, she's not expected to play today. A knee injury suffered yesterday. That's got to impact the Sixers team in a gigantic way. They have a very disciplined offense with lots of moving parts who are very capable, but Kimura is the engine that makes the Sixers offense run. It'll be very difficult for them to overcome this loss today. We will see how they adjust. Boston Brute Squad is just one and two against Sixers this season, but they did get a win in this national tournament, jumping out to a 9-1 lead in that pool play matchup. And Brute Squad has been really yearning for this moment for a few years now after losing on Universe in the championship game to Fury each of the past two seasons. We talked about it yesterday. All the pieces seem to be coming together well for Boston Brute Squad. They endured a really tough battle against Fury yesterday and, and that pressure seemed to test them in a positive way. I think they're going to come out pretty hot today. Some of the same faces have been spectacular like Cami Gruen and Leanne Hoffman but Angela Zhu won the Callahan for Dartmouth a couple years ago it's unbelievable how authoritative she's been with the disc. Right, as the pressure mounts, she only gets better and better. Her team has been able to rely on her to get them out of st sticky situations with her amazing throws and great field vision. So no Lauren Kimura, but this Toronto Sixers team, hey, they're thrilled to be here and they're gonna give it everything they've got. They won the Canadian National Championship. There are a ton of players on this team that may not have USA Nationals Championship game experience, but World Championship experience. And without Kimura, Jordan Marin, the target's on her back even more. She's the heart and soul of this team, one of the founders. Her coaches had a lot of very positive things to say about her ability to really push the importance of the team culture, keeping spirits high. Given the fact that they will be playing without Kimura, they will be looking to her leadership to remind them of all the hard work that it has taken to get them from founding in 2016 to playing in the finals today. It's been a weekend that has redefined expectations in the women's division of Club Ultimate. Brute Squad, despite being the lower seed, they're the favorite. Toronto Sixers relishing the underdog role. Brute Squad Sixers women's final is next. The USA Ultimate National Championships are brought to you by Discraft. Home of the Ultra Star, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Now featuring an updated website to make ordering custom discs easier than ever. Visit Discraft.com for all your custom disc needs. Well, for Boston Brute Squad, plenty of names who have been in this spot before. Would you believe this is Lauren Sadler's seventh consecutive year playing in the finals at Nationals with Scandal, Riot, and now Brute Squad? It's an unbelievable streak for Sadler with Groom, Trope, Wong, Douglas, Zhu, and Lee. That certainly looks like a strong Brute Squad D-line to start the game for Ariel Jackson. And on offense, who will the Sixers turn to without Lauren Kimura? Well, we talked about Jordan Marin. In the open, Anushka Beaudry has heaped a lot of responsibility, ha as have Sarah Innes and Britt De Santo Santos. So reshuffling the deck a little bit for Carla Di Filippo and Elena Papianis. For more on the injury situations and a couple other players that the Sixers are without, we check in with Ian. Thanks, Evan. The Sixers squad is showing support for injured players and players who aren't here with some creative temporary leg tattoos. You'll notice number 11 and number 16 on many teammates' calves. 11 is Lauren Kinoshita. She can't be here because she's tending to a family illness. And 16 refers to Jessica Chen. She's been sidelined with a concussion since the pro championships. And some Sixers in the last few minutes after learning that Lauren Kimura wouldn't be playing have even started to temporarily tattoo LK or the number 20 on their legs as well. Yeah, 
66 degrees, it's cool and it's breezy and the wind will certainly be a factor. Brute Squad, Megan, has an advantage. One, they've been here in this spot. This is their fifth straight year in the finals. Two wins, two universe point losses to Fury. They also got to play in the stadium yesterday while Sixers Semi was over at the Surf Cup Sports Park. Wonderful facility, but different wind tunnels than the stadium. And we talked about how that seemed to impact both Brute and Fury's play style as they learned to adjust to the slight, slightly gusty conditions that are present in the stadium. Brute Squad beginning the game on offense with Claudia Tajima, Amber Sinecrope, Juliana Werfele, and here's the deep shot looking for Hoffman. She accelerates to the end zone, but it's knocked away by Sixers' Miriam Tingle. Both coaches, Carla DiFilippo for Sixers and Ariel Jackson for Brute Squad have emphasized how they need to be aggressive with the deep game early in games and that can open up some underneath spots think about the confidence boost the Sixers would gain from working it into the wind here 70 yards on the game's first point that disc the wind helps it sit up and it's caught by Alyssa Mason up the line Hannah Dawson Oh, goodness. Too, too many players in the reset. It's an impressive 68-yard march by Sixers. They just couldn't finish off the drive. And I think that's what's been most impressive about the Sixers' defense is as soon as they get an opportunity, they attack the field aggressively. This is among the breeziest conditions we've had at this stadium field. Ian Hoffman makes the sliding snag. Marked by Tingle. Here's Sinecrope. Over to Tajima. Juliana Werfele played a lot of D-line in the past. Moved over to offense and she'll pick up the hockey assist. It's Sinecrope finding Malinowski, and Brute Squad able to hold on their opening offensive point. The miscommunication in the reset gives Brute Squad the opportunity to march down the field, and we see them exhibit the same patience that they did yesterday in their game against Fury as the as the game wore on and the pressure mounted from Fury, they worked really hard to just dump and swing around the front of the end zone until a lane opened up. So they came ready to do the exact same thing today, and we see it result in the first score for Brute Squad. 13 assists now on the weekend for Amber Sinecrope in her 14th year. Out of Amherst, Massachusetts. The win over Sixers in pool play finished 15-10. In some ways, it was an encouraging second half for Toronto because they trailed 8-1 at the half, fell behind 9-1, and made the final score look a lot more respectable. Yeah, Coach Filippo said that they weren't using their long game. They were hesitant to use their long game in the first half, and that really challenged them and enabled Brute Squad to guard the unders and prevent them from getting the disc down the field. When they started opening up the long game, they relaxed more in the second half, and as you said, put up a far more respectable score. Inbounds, tremendous hustle by Dawson to keep that alive. Brito Santos to Jordan Merritt. And up the line, Caitlin Lee gets beat by Britt Dos Santos. And Sixers, even the score at one. Did Hannah Dawson get this inbounds? That's very, very close. Foot was landing right as the hand was landing. 
give her the benefit of the doubt for the athleticism for sure. Just a couple throws later, Marin picks up the assist to Britt Dos Santos, whose older sister Crystal is also on this Sixers squad. Where did the Sixers come from? Well, for a long time, the top women's team in Toronto was the Capitals. But when USA Ultimate introduced the new Triple Crown Tour requirements, that was kind of the beginning of the end for that Capitals team. They weren't really willing to commit to going to the, all the necessary required tournaments. So they stopped practicing as much. They weren't as committed. The results got worse. And as that program disintegrated, this Sixers program began to rise. Started in 2016 by a group of Toronto players, Jordan Marin, Jeanette Kwok, Lauren Kimura involved as well. There are 12 current players on the Sixers team that have been on the squad all four years. And, well, it's the Canadian Root Squad star, Jesse Grignon Tomas, who drops it. And the ensuing deep shot looking for Kwok. Unsuccessful as she halted her cut. One one your score, one turn per side on this third point. And on one of the fakes, it was Jeanette, uh, Jenna McLeod getting dinged from Amber Sinecrope's aggressive fakes. And McLeod, one of the captains, going to the sideline. Ouch. Oh. McLeod and Marin are the two captains of the Sixers team. Both important leaders in their own way. With McLeod going out, the 18-year-old Sarah Jacobson enters. Her teammates just call her Bear. She was a gold medalist at the 2016 U-20 World Championships, and she's 18 now, which means she was 15 on that U-20 team then. She made some gigantic plays in the comeback win against Riot in quarterfinals for the Sixers. Jenna, you want to go to the observer? That's fine. It, no contest. It's total on four. Okay. Okay. On four. Okay. On four. Good spirit by Cinecrope. Feeling the feeling out the room a little bit. <laughs> Grignon Toma. Cinecrope launching. And that's right on the money. Lane Sidor tracks it down for the Brute Squad score. That's just a great put. Plenty of outside in to float that into the end zone, bending it around. Any Toronto defense. That's a nice shot from Sinecro. Two assists for Sinecro. Cedor with her first goal, and we check in with Ian down on the sidelines for more on Kimura. Thanks, Evan. I just spoke with Lauren, as we didn't know before, many minutes before this game started, that she would not be active. But she said the injury occurred during the semifinal against Schwa. She was trying to squat down and kind of a half lunge to catch a pull. And in doing so, she said she tweaked, in her words, her right knee. She taped everything up this morning, tried to give it a go in warm-ups, could only get up to about 70% speed and said she wasn't feeling stable enough to be able to participate at 100% in this game. Jordan Marin sending it to a wide open, Sarah Innes. And so far, so good for the Sixers offense without their star, Kimura. Dos Santos with the flick dime for Sixers, not Marin, my apologies. The Sixers do have a very disciplined offense. They're good at moving quickly, generating lots of possibilities downfield. 
They're also cognizant of where their teammates are, so they keep space open for shots like that. As you said, so far so good for the Sixers. They are showing that without Kimura, they are happy to step in and bear the responsibility that Kimura often bore. Hey, Megan, you've played at Nationals many times in a lot of elimination games. Can you imagine the difficulty of Lauren Kimura's decision to, to warm up and, and choose not to play in this game? She has been on this team since the start. She has been a part of this program that has been designed to get to this moment. I cannot imagine what it took for her to say, I will not be a benefit to the team on the field. I am going to sideline myself so that I don't potentially damage our chances of winning this game. And in some way it shows a great level of maturity and knowing yourself and knowing your team. And you know, obviously she love, would love to be out there playing in this game as the shot finds a lot of Schwamm. Brut squad in the red zone already. A lot of Schwamm has had quite a personal journey as well, and she's trying to squeeze it into Werfley. Juliana called a foul. Sarah Boback there defensively for Sixers. And it will be Sixers disc. Werfley, after seeing the replay, I think wisely retracts the call. Yeah. Great defense from Boback. You know, this Sixers team has a bunch of players whose names that I think American folks who follow USA national teams are casually familiar with. Names that you see in world competitions. And speaking of world competitions, Cat Phillips. The Australian pickup for this Toronto team fires deep, a great catch, and now another Sixers injury. And that's Alyssa Mason, whom her coaches were just raving about, the way she has stepped up, especially defensively. So the athletic trainers will look at Mason. And a fantastic catch, kind of an awkward landing, and an ominous reaction. Anushka Bodri on the field to put the disc in play. As frustrating and as dispiriting as all these injuries must be, Sixers have the lead in the finals at USA Ultimates National Championships. Boback falls in the score from Beaudry. Coach DiFilippo talked about how the culture of the Sixers stresses the importance of team first mentality. And the performance we are seeing from Sixers this early in the game shows that everyone is bought in to that mentality. There are so many top players who are not in this game and yet they are completely undeterred. First break of the game belongs to Toronto. Bookends for Bobak, the D and the score as Anushka Beaudry picks up another assist. Beaudry from Montreal originally moved to Toronto this summer to train. There have been plenty of shockers this weekend throughout the tournament, particularly in the women's division. For Sixers to be here is pretty stunning, especially the way they got here, the way Brute Squad handled them so thoroughly in pool play. And yet here they are. 
Werfley able to make the catch, taking out one of her opponents in the process. Good to see Hannah Dawson pop right back up. Malinowski. Back to Jay, as they call her. Here's the dynamic Claire Trope. And perhaps even more dynamic Cami Groom. Angela Zhu focused on her in the open. Zoo has had an uncanny ability high in stall counts to put the disc in the right spot. But this time trying to squeeze it through to her old college teammate Werfley and Brute Squad turns it over again. Molly Lewis quickly to Cat Phillips. Imagine there are folks in Australia enjoying watching this. Cat Phillips is a legend over there. Part of those ellipsis teams from Melbourne that won the U.S. Open. Consistently challenged for world championships. Look at Phillips as Fruit Squad retakes possession. Tulsa Douglas to Trope and Groom. Good stack discipline here from Brute Squad. Letting the handlers work. Malinowski needs to clear out. She was guarded. Sue and Groom continue to work it. Now Malinowski drops it five yards out. What is going on here? Lewis to Tingle. No contest. 24-year-old Molly Lewis will initiate for Sixers. One of the 12 players on this Toronto team that has been on the Sixers roster since 2016. In their fourth year as a program. And that throw is too low for Phillips. Douglas quickly picks up. Cammy Grooms calling for it in the deep space. Zoo to Douglas for the Brute Squad hold after each team turned it twice on the point. It is fair to say Sixers made Brute Squad work for that score. And that's exactly how they are going to have to fight all game long if they want to keep their hopes alive for a finals victory by wearing down Brute Squad, making them make difficult decisions keeping the lanes open for only the briefest of moments. Brute Squad has shown so much patience in pressure like this, but it is hard to continue to make the right decision time and time again as the game wears on. Tulsa Douglas Probably just scratching the surface of her talent. 23-year-old burgeoning star out of St. Olaf Olaf College. One of the many Amherst Regional High School alums on this Brute Squad team. If we can, let's go check in with Ian. How would you characterize these conditions right now that these teams are working through? Evan, I think things are 
constantly shifting. We've had a couple points where the wind is fairly stiff, moving from left to right across your stream, across your screen. But right now, in the middle of this point, as I stand here on the sideline, I don't feel any breeze or any gust whatsoever. So I think it's shifting from point to point. We've had some points with stiffer conditions and some with calmer. Okay, so is there a foul? Okay, no call. It'll be, it'll be on a one. No call. No call. No call. Toronto's disc in a 3-3 game. This is Beaudry. Pretty good chunk of yards there for Crystal Dos Santos. But trying to sneak it up line to her sister. And great defense anticipating the play by Aaron Ray. Here's Lee. Now, Groom was going deep, but Sarah Innes was with her stride for stride. And that forced the more difficult squeeze through pass looking for Zoo. Brute squad not clicking on all cylinders early in this game, Megan. Jordan Marin continues it for Beaudry. Rips it cross field. And that disc is caught by Adriana Rowe. The observer is saying the disc was out of bounds. This is out of bounds. Goodness, this is coming back. We'll get the benefit of a second look. What? The observer who is entrusted to make active in and out calls ruled Beaudry out, and I think it was the right call. Yeah, it looked like she stepped right on the line. So Brute Squad with Angela Zhu shooting it long. Aaron Ray dropped it five yards shy of the goal line. Angela Zhu bids, and that disc out of bounds despite the ridiculous effort by Mason. Oh, if only her feet were a couple inches smaller, she might have two toe in the line grabs and an assist, and instead, it's Boston Brute Squad with its first break, lead to Groom to put us back on serve. Brute Squad up 4 3. Great D from Zoo. An absolutely phenomenal effort. And I'm not certain that that was the correct call. I know. First goal for Cami Groom here in the final. Goodness, what a, what a sequence there. That was good. Not sure if we can get another look at that sideline toe tap attempt. Just a, just a great effort. Groom, always among Boston's leading goal scorers. Ariel Jackson re-emphasizing his couple of bullet points. Here's another look at this attempt. That's in. Wow. You got two observers right there, both staring at it. It's such a tough call. Anushka Beaudry. Oh, so close. Beaudry, part of that U20 Canadian gold medal team in 2016.
had her career highlight before this, who's winning worlds on universe point against Team USA 2016. Certainly several members of this Brute Squad team remember that well. There might be a new career highlight after today. There's an incredibly fine line, Megan, between being happy to be there and then bringing your best in that game and something you've never experienced before. And you know, from spending some time with the Sixers this morning, from watching their press conference on Ulti World yesterday, it, it feels like they're straddling that line well, that they're pretty comfortable in their skin right now, and, which is even more amazing considering they're playing without their best player, Lauren Kimura, who had more than double the number of assists than anyone else on her team this season. Well, I think, again, it speaks to the team culture. Deep shot goes up. Beaudry cross field. And Jordan Marin is there. <laughs> nice find. This is your first time seeing Anushka Beaudry play. Take note, she's for real. She assesses the situation quickly and releases that throw beautifully. So much zip to get it high and across the field, right into the end zone for Marin. Beaudry just 21 years old, but she's been playing ultimate for nine years. Her father and brother signed her up for a tournament. And she's loved it ever since. Jordan Marin, you know, a week ago she was coaching the University of Toronto college team to a Canadian University Championships. They beat Queens in the finals. Jordan Marin had Brito Santos. And uh, Sarah Marr on that team playing for. Her. A week later, they're playing for a USA Ultimate National Championship. Here's Werfley shooting it. Hoffman unable to make the catch. Got a fingertip on it. But it's Sixers disc. More than a fingertip. Yeah, great attempt from Hoffman, but clearly bounced out of her hand before she was able to squeeze down. Cat Phillips, who's been such a driving force for this Toronto D-line, picks up. Another close call near the sideline, but Sarah Jacobson clearly in. Mason dropped it. Hoffman picks up. The sun is trying to break through this very dark, overcast sky here in San Diego. And there's a Brute Squad score as Alana Schwamm hauls it in with the bid. Third assist for Cinecrope. And Alana Schwamm, such a feel-good story in Ultimate for overcoming the trials and tribulations she's been through the past few years to get back and contribute to her team in championship games year in, year out. If you're not familiar with Schwamm's story, diagnosed with stage 3B malignant melanoma in 2016, went through surgery and immunotherapy during that club season, beat it, she's back. 5-4 Boston as we go down to the sidelines and check in with Ian. Thanks, Evan. You saw Alyssa Mason, number 12, on the Sixers, marking Leanne Hoffman on that point. She's returned to play after sustaining an injury earlier in this half. You saw her chase down that huck from Cat Phillips and then immediately go down on the ground in pain and remove herself from play. She said she was so focused on trying to keep her feet in bounds and make the catch that she wasn't prepared for her landing. 
And so when she did make contact with the ground, she hyper extended her elbow. However, she said that's not keeping her out the rest of this game. You saw her back that last point, and she's going to keep playing as long as she can. Somehow losing great players has seemed to make the Sixers team play even better. So I'm not counting them out no matter what happens. You know, there were so many players I was excited to have showcased in this game. And a large number of them are not playing. I think the Sixers have to be excited to showcase. You, you've seen. How about this? It was intended for Marin. Went through her grasp and Hannah Dawson was there to clean it up. We're tied at five. Another assist for Beaudry, and good throwers get good breaks. Wow. Let that be a lesson. Always keep your eye on the disc. It's a great point, Megan. You never know when you're able to help out your team. But to finish up my point from earlier, I really feel like the Sixers have to be excited to, to show off the depth of their, of their roster. Um, as you've mentioned before, perhaps not a lot of household names on the Sixers, but certainly a lot of names you're going to get to know today. Three assists for Beaudry. In pool play, wins over Schwa and Pop, then the loss to Brute Squad, the team that they had beaten twice earlier in the season at Pro Championships, and then again in the regional final. But a convincing win over Nemesis. The crazy comeback against Riot. I mean, that was the stunner. In some ways, even more shocking than Molly Brown falling to Schwa. Molly Brown was up 10-7, had the disc, mul uh, excuse me, Riot was up 10-7 over Sixers, had the disc multiple times to go up 11-7, couldn't do it. And then Sixers closed that game on a 7-2 run. Oh, tough grab by Cedor. But a stall was called. Going back to Tajima, we'll see if it's contested. With 10 okay, seconds like to throw. So nine, still 10. I think it, no, I think it was, honestly. But we can. Do you want to keep it here? I, I, I think. Okay. okay. Is it at? Stalling eight. Stalling eight. Coming in at eight. Stalling eight. Tajima with a nice break. It's stall nine there to get it off. We're fully. There's Cedor. Sinecro. Is she in line for her fourth assist? Not with that shot. You mentioned earlier the comeback that the Sixers mounted in their game against Riot. And this, the Sixers in their game against Riot, as well as their game against Brute earlier this tournament, Coach DiFilippo said they were down when they weren't using their long game. They really feel it's so important for their offense to stretch the field. Good field position for Brute squad after the Sixers error. Tajima about 11 yards from the goal line. Grignon Toma. Threw it a little too hot for Hoffman. That seems to be the nature of a lot of Brute Squad errors today. Just attacking a little too aggressively, 
perhaps even a tad aggressively. I know Coach Jackson yesterday spoke about the importance of moving their systems quickly. It seems like Boot Squad is moving just a little bit faster than they can process so far this game. Making amends for the error. Grignon Tomas lays out, gets a piece of it for the block. And Sinecro takes a timeout. Four turnovers so far on this point, the 11th of the half in a 5-5 tie. Asked the Toronto coaches jokingly before the game, have you tried to get Jesse Grignon Tomas to play with you? And they said, no, she's awesome, but Boston's actually closer to where she lives than Toronto is. 2019 Triple Crown Tour. Boston Brut Squad winning the U.S. Open and stumbling in the Pro Championships. Fury took that regular season finale event. Victories for Scandal, Traffic, Rival, and how about Boston Siege, a second women's team brewing in Boston, their first appearance at Nationals this year. Megan, do you remember your takeaways from your very first appearance at Nationals, which was what, 2006? 2006. Yeah, when I, I was so nervous for my very first Nationals. When felt like I didn't belong there, assumed that every single game I was at a deficit. Um, and that was a huge learning experience for me, for a number of other, uh, for a number of my teammates. Say, you belong here. This is what you design your season towards. And yes, every game is going to be harder than most of the games at tournaments in the regular season. And it, it takes practice to perform under that kind of pressure for the entire weekend. Imagine many Siege players feel similarly. Out of the timeout, Hoffman was open, but Sinecrope unable to connect with her. This is the ninth break chance of the game right here for Sixers. They're currently one for eight, which is a credit to Brute Squad's O-line defense. Wow. Deflection finds Miriam Tingle. He runs down the flick into the breeze from Lewis. And a Brute Squad player is down across midfield. It was a pick. Sinecrope, a little too far for Hoffman. These types of bounces so far, Megan, are going Sixers yeah, way. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. Sammy Groom just came in. Off the Brute Squad bench. Lane Cedor going to the sidelines. Low throw and Sixers turn it again. This has been the longest point of the half from a turnover perspective. Santa Crow. To an open groom, past the bidding Jacobson, and it's Alana Schwamm with her second score of the game. Brut Squad manages the offensive hold in a very circuitous way. Two goals for Schwamm. Cami Groom picks up her first assist to the final to go with the goal that made it 4-3. That was, in fact, Brute Squad's break of the half. One break per side. Mentioned it in the open, but worth saying again, Megan, you've 
been to nationals pretty much every year since 2006. This is the first time that you're watching a women's final that doesn't have either Fury or Riot. Are you disoriented at all? Uh, yeah, I think this is a dream. For Boston and Toronto it is. <laughs> Just the third time since 2006 that Fury has missed the final. Great anticipation from Brute Squad Sophie Holbert in the deep space. It was pretty clear Marin did not recognize she had defense in the area. That is on her team for not letting her know that there is a person coming. She needs to attack the disc faster. Zoo picks up. And goodness, that was just tremendous defense from Hannah Dawson. There may have been a call on the mark. Hannah Dawson would leave for six. It looks like we have an injured player. It's Adriana Rowe shaking up. What is going on with the Sixers? Hard to say if there was any contact there, Megan. Yeah, it kind of looked like she shuffled out. There was no call, so it's Sixers disc. They've got it. Ten yards from the goal line. Beaudry floats it. Incomplete. Bobak's bid just comes up short. Sixers now one for 10 on break chances. I beg your pardon, this is a Sixers O point. And they are denying Brute Squad completions on defense, let alone breaks. Anna Dawson. To Jordan Marin. Not in yet. One throw away again. Sixers third turn of the point. Sixers is really starting to look flustered as we near the end of the first half. They are making uncharacteristic mistakes that we haven't seen so far this game. I have to think that fatigue is starting to play a factor. And yet, Brute Squad is just having trouble completing passes, especially when they're forced to the sideline. Beaudry's shot is going to be hauled in this time by Brito Santos. Another dime from Beaudry to tie the game at six. Anushka Beaudry has been the breakout star of this women's final with four assists on her team's six scores. It's, it's unusual to see Brute Squad struggle to move the disc like this. You know, at the U.S. Open, they looked so clean in their final against Revolution. And then, as we mentioned already, they struggled at pro championships. I talked to Coach Jackson about that, and he said, you know, I think the mistakes, I think the issues we needed to work on were present, were present at U.S. Open. Our overall result didn't show that, but, but they were there, and they made themselves more apparent at pro championship. And up until this point, I have felt like they have dialed in whatever issues were plaguing them earlier in the season. 
but it looks like they haven't hammered out that consistency. One of the interesting things is we talked to Ariel Jackson, Brute Squad coach, about this, and he said, frankly, I think our performance at the U.S. Open was a little bit misleading. He said we won a number of games on Universe that could have gone either way, could have lost in quarters or semis. There were aspects of things that were symptoms of stuff that could go wrong, that didn't go wrong at the U.S. Open, but did go wrong at the Pro Championships. He said they weren't maximizing their system. They worked really hard on it in practice the past few weeks, and they feel like they've gotten the kinks worked out. You know, here they are in the finals, but they have not played their crispest half by a long shot. Stoppage downfield with Malinowski in possession. I believe now. When I have a moment, I can check. Here's Lee Ann Hoffman. And another stoppage downfield. How far back? Two down. He said it was two back. From, so we'll say six, 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 five. Okay. So four. Say four. Sinecro to Werfele, and she is in the end zone. That is the first turnover free hold by the Boston O-line in the game. Sixers had four turnover free holds from their O-line before Brute Squad had one. When working well, the way Brute Squad conducts themselves at the front of the stack, especially as they approach the end zone, is clinical. They stretch the field so wide. And you noticed how patiently Werfele waited in the front of the stack until the disc was nearing Cinecrope. And just moments before Cinecrope caught the disc, Werfele cut wide fast, making her wide open for that score. Werfele, part of that great Seattle youth scene from Kirkland, Washington. An East Coaster now after attending Dartmouth. Werfele in her fourth year with Brute Squad. Elsa Douglas, one of the four players on Brood Squad who graduated from Amherst Regional High School with the pull, along with Zoo, Tajima, and Sinecrope. There's a mistake from Cindy Tronk. Brood Squad with a chance to take half. Here's Douglas. Squeezes it through the small space to Zoo. And here's Groom, 10 yards out. Zoo, always sure-handed with the disc. And that shot near the sideline. Out of Groom's reach. Just got away from Zoo a little bit. Yeah. Wrong edge. A surprising miss execution from Zoo. Beaudry with a stall count rising just launches. Player Trope gets a piece of it, swats it downfield. Root Squad will have 70 yards in front of him. Back, 
That'd be a little scary the way she batted that and popped up ever so slightly, <laughs> but give her credit for the block. Tammy Groom to Douglas and now Zoo. Caitlin Lee keeps it alive with a bid. Nice break from Lee and Groom. Now on the doorstep. Groom just shy of the goal line. Back to Lee. How steady is Caitlin Lee? Zoo cutting from the front of the stack. She wasn't open, so the reset finds Groom again. Excellent end zone defense from Sixers. And Jordan Merrin intercepts the shot to the end zone. Timeout, Toronto. How about that full team defensive effort from the Sixers? They did such a good job of stopping the movement between Lee and Groom, keeping pushing them closer and closer to the sideline. Instead of letting them have that nice open dump and swing that they like, they crammed them up to that front corner of the end zone. Look, that's exactly where Kami Green would like to swing wide. She has to go back and hit Lee. They're denying the dump, denying the dump, forcing them closer and closer to the sideline as Lee goes for what she presumes will be an easy strike cut, that's when Marin strikes the moment she's been waiting for, goes in and gets the D. Well said. Each team with 16 turnovers in this half, there have been a slew of break chances, but only two breaks have been recorded. Bowback the score that put Toronto up 3-2. And then Groom's goal that made it 4-3. Boston in front. Been trading ever since. Few chances here on this point for Brute Squad to break. Now Toronto tries to work it downfield for the hold. And the first pass denied by Lauren Sadler, who is no stranger to this stage. Douglas. To Lee. Continue for Groom. Trope making the cut. Cammy hits her. Boston breaks to take half. Felt like only a matter of time. They had a bunch of chances on the goal line. And Groom and Trope, so much speed in that connection. 8-6 Boston. And not an easy put. That is a margin that gets close, narrower and narrower as Trope is running, but Cammy hits it beautifully. 8-6, Brute Squad at the half. Let's go to Ian. Thanks, Evan. Coach Jackson, a different tone here in the final compared to the 8-1 start that you had against this Sixers squad in pool play. What is Sixers doing differently in this championship game? Uh, they're responding to our pressure much better, and they're giving it back to us. Um, I think we surprised them a little bit when we brought the defense that we brought in pool play, um, uh, but they're not surprised anymore, right? They know what we're capable of, and they're responding really well to it. Before the game, you said you wanted your offense to focus on really quick and confident disc movement. Yeah. How would you assess your team's performance in the first half there? That's been our biggest weak point. That's what we need to fix. 
What's the message to the team and the most important emphasis going into the second half? Uh, we got to lean into our system. Uh, we have too many people trying to do too much, not necessarily with throwing hero ball hucks or anything, but just being in spaces that we don't want them in, and that's making it much harder for us to run our offense. Coach Jackson, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Evan and Megan, back up to you. That's a fantastically honest and blunt assessment in his team. Players are trying to do too much with their cuts and not trusting the system. Lean into the system. That's the key for Brute Squad as they move to the second half. They get a two-goal lead in the women's final here in San Diego. 8-6 Boston Brute Squad leads Toronto Sixers at the half. It is not the first appearance in the finals for a Toronto team. Back in 2010, the Capitals made the finals where they took on Fury, fell 15-9. The Toronto coaches Carla Filippo and Elena Papianis were both players on that Toronto team. They're right there, Megan, with this Brute Squad team. One break is the difference. Yeah, they have been staying step for step with Brute Squad. And, you know, we just weren't expecting that given the personnel that they have lost. But they are showing that they have a number of capable players who will make big plays when necessary. DeSantos has been great. Marin has been stepping up as we presumed she would now that her team needs her more than ever. Their offense clicked really well at the beginning of the game. Brute Squad's offense has had moments of brilliance and moments of issues. Participate at 100% in this game. Another beautiful put from DeSantos. If you joined us late, Sixers are without their star, Lauren Kimura who tweaked her knee yesterday, said she tried to warm up, could only get to about 70% and made the very tough call to not play. This was a tough call against Sixers, ruled out of bounds when it looked like Beaudry had kept it in. Not the cleanest of halves, but Beaudry's throws have kept Toronto right there within striking distance. Yeah, Beaudry is having herself a game, making some tough grabs, great throws. That was a tough grab from Schwamm there. Dawson showing us why you should always follow the play. Goal from Dawson, made it five all. And that shot, beautifully done from Beaudry to Dos Santos, tied it at six. This was the hold. The only turnover free hold of the half, Werfele from Cinecrope. And then after five turns on the last point of the half, Groom connecting with Trope for the break. That puts Brute Squad up by two. The Sixers will be on offense when we start the second half. They're going to need at least two breaks to win. They've only broken Brute's offense once so far, but they've had about a dozen chances. Second half of the women's final on the way. What would it look like if a competitive sport didn't mean a choice? Between beauty and brutality, style and steel. Between calling yourself out and clawing to stay in. What if there was a game that found balance? between spirit and sport, agony and elation, like a disc dancing on air. We now have evolved into a team sport of a game called Ultimate. It stands by itself in that it is like no other game. Between perfect passes and devastating drops, like the balance we so desperately needed, we had no choice but to create it ourselves. Long live grit and grace. Long live ultimate. The 
last 50 years have seen a lot of positive change. Around a whole range of important issues. And some things remain reassuringly unchanged. Like the spirit of our game. Ultimate is 50 years young. And still a perfect circle. Of fair play. Athletic pursuit. And camaraderie. In fact, Ultimate was a social network. Before social networks even existed. Respetamos nuestras diferencias. And understand the value that they add. The revolution of the disc in flight continues to prove that there's nothing we can't achieve when we pull together. Long live Ultimate. Larga vida Ultimate. Long live Ultimate. Welcome back. Halftime here at the Women's National Championship game. Brute Squad leading Sixers 8-6. I'm joined by Sixers head coach Carla DiFilippo. Hello. Carla, yeah. in pool play, your team was trailing 8-1 at halftime against mm -hmm. Brute Squad. Yeah. How has your team been able to put together such a different performance so far today? Um, I think that first half was um, odd. It's not like us to be like that. Um, and there's a lot of learning in, in losing um, and reflection. And, and we did digest that game quite a bit and talk about sort of things that we could do differently uh, moving forward. And so uh, I think they're much more focused and, and they believe because um, we did have a great second half in that game. So we're riding off that second half more than the first half. <laughs> you talk about belief. All tournament long, your team has had to deal with significant injuries to key players. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to cultivate that next person up mentality? We use a lot. We have a deep bench, um, and all season we've used all of our players a lot. Uh, and so, you know, it's not hard for us to call up uh, someone who doesn't typically start to start. We have a lot of faith in them. We have a lot of, of depth compared to most years. So, I think it's just normal. You know, like they're happy to have the chance, um, and you know, they're rising to the occasion. So it's great. What did you emphasize to the team in the halftime huddle? Um, well, our huddles usually we try to just refocus and review our goals. We have an O goal, D goal. Um, and so we just, you know, stay focused more than anything. Um, and really, because we're here, it's enjoying it because this is an amazing experience. And we hope we're making everyone back in Canada proud and in Toronto. And thank you for all your support. Uh, we're really appreciative of it. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you so much. Bye. Brute Squad leading Sixers 8-6 here at halftime of the Women's Championship game. Second half coming right up after the break. Set for the second half of this women's final. Brute Squad leading 8-6. You see Adriana Rowe with her knee wrapped. Appeared to hyperextend her knee on the sideline. Quick look at the scoring summary. Two goals apiece for Brute Squad's Alana Schwamm and Sixers. Britt Dos Santos, Sinecrope, and Beaudry have been the quarterbacks of their respective teams, especially in the red zone, although Beaudry's sent a bunch of Hawks for scores too. Megan, everybody's expecting Boston to run away with this. Toronto is shorthanded, they're down by two. What's the recipe for Sixers? The recipe for Sixers has got to be to move their offense quickly. They have to score quickly to get off the field and stay rested. They are losing players left and right as deep as their roster is. Dos Santos firing incomplete, intended for Trong. As soon as you start losing, losing bodies makes the number of points that everyone has to play go up. It's interesting that Boston begins this half on defense, but basically with their O-line. Tajima, Sinecrope, Werfele. And that shot looking for Grignon Tomas, easily intercepted. Bowback sure picks it off. And Werfele gets the block. Dos Santos initiated a conversation for a moment. Looks like we have a call on the stack. Perhaps there was a call on the stack. 
I think I heard the observer say the offense called a foul in the stack, which means this disc is going to go back to Beaudry. Huge break for Sixers. Contested. By the way, Sixers, the origin of the name, not a great story behind it. It's just Drake who calls Toronto the six because of the area code 416 or 647. Imagine Drake is watching today. Uh, it just got the play as contested. Uh, so it's gonna be stall count plus one. Looking for a foul and didn't see much. Sixers will maintain possession. And a pretty good stretch for Toronto sports. Obviously the Raptors, the reigning NBA champs. Bianca Andreescu went to New York and won the U.S. Open. Could Toronto Sixers come to San Diego and win the USA Ultimate National Championship? Not if they don't get the offense to be in a little bit better groove than what we've seen on this point. Two turns in the point for Sixers. Lane Cedor fires deep. Floater for Hoffman, and she's got it. Hoffman's not a giant, but at 5'6", she's got an inch on Cindy Trong, who's 5'5". And with her World Games experience, you knew she was going to come up with that. And those are the kind of mistakes that Sixers have to try and to limit. And the experience Hoffman shows by stutter stepping just a little bit to get her body directly underneath that throw because she knows she's going to have to jump Sixers under pressure. First time out of the second half. Sixers take the timeout early here in the second half. Toronto trying to regain its focus. Meanwhile, Lane Cedor, who just threw that assist, is a pretty cool story. Ulti World, who does so much great work, and if you're not a subscriber, you should be to support the tremendous journalism that Charlie Eisenhood and his crew creates on a daily basis during the season, during nationals, and in the offseason as well. Lane Cedor, formerly played with Atlanta, moved to New York, and has been one of a handful of commuting players for this Boston team, along with Cassie Wong and Jesse Grignon Tomas and a couple of others. Ariel Jackson said she's been a great addition to the team, dealing with injuries, but when healthy, she brings a, a tremendous presence, size, experience, and just a good all-around player for the University of Georgia product. Megan, it's going to be interesting after Nationals to kind of take a deep breath and look at this women's division. Because for each of the last four years, it was a clear top four and a giant gap. And there may still be a gap. But considering Ozone two years ago knocked off Riot in the quarters, and this year you have Sixers and Schwa knocking off the superpowers in the quarters, plus the, the burgeoning growth that we've seen from Raleigh Claire Phoenix DC scandal I'm not sure they were ever a real national title contender this year but certainly they've added to their resources and arsenal the depth is growing and the player movement will make things interesting quick huck second effort but no catch for Jacobson yeah things are things are being shooken up in the women's division for different reasons. Some areas have youth programs that are really developing some oh. strong talent early. Lauren Sadler, are you kidding me? Sixers is definitely a program that is benefiting from the Toronto youth scene. Zoo shooting for Trope. Claire Trope makes the catch without much space to spare. And she'll celebrate Fruit Squad's 10th goal. It's their fourth in a row. Off 
beautifully pretty throw. Johnson was just unable to read correctly. Great crab. Ho hum. <laughs> Lauren Sadler has been in every single USA Ultimate Final in the club division that has been televised by ESPN3. ESPN3 joined USA Ultimate's mission in 2013, every year since then, all seven of them. Lauren Sadler has been around. And Claire Trope making the decision to leave Seattle Riot stay on the East Coast and play with Brute Squad. You know, there was quite a Dartmouth pull of war, uh, tug of war between <laughs> Jack Verju and Angela Zhu, Juliana Werfele, Caitlin Lee. Jack Strong, but perhaps the three Brute Squad players won that <laughs> tug of war. But that's how many it took. That's three breaks in a row for Boston including the hold at six all, four straight goals for Brute Squad. Lewis to the sideline, finding Trong in the middle of the field. Two number four is matched up against each other and Hoffman gets a piece of the throw and does not contest the foul call. Feels like it's slipping away from Sixers here. Root squad to Sinecrope, to Jima, Cedor. Forced it when it wasn't available. Trying to get it to Schwamm, but excellent defense by Tingle. Okay. You saw it out too, so stalling three. Oh. Injury substitution. Injury Jordan substitution. Marin Jordan off. Marin Sixers. steps off. Sarah Boback is on. Marin Who heading over to the athletic Who's trainer's tent. Walking under her own power, maybe You're just good. trying to get some tape or something. Cedor back to the sideline. Groom is in. And Cammy Groom has an easy interception. Cammy Groom with a takeaway. Disc over to Boot Squad. This half feeling a little bit more like the first half from pool play when Brute Squad scored seven straight to transform a 1 1 tie into an 8 1 lead. Sinecrope. Create a little contact in her pursuit of that disc. Take a look. That's two players going after the disc. Yeah. Heck of a bid by Beaudry. From the one replay that we saw, it looked like she dropped the disc. She did have her hand on the disc, but it looks like the contact with the ground made her drop it. And is there anything to the idea that Beaudry bid first? I mean, it, we need another look at it, but it looked to me like Beaudry almost bid first. So yes, Sinecro may have created contact. But that contact, I mean, it's very close. Sinecrope certainly had the inside position. They contest it, it goes back, and Hoffman hits Groom, and she's fired up. She can taste a third national title for Brute as they record their fourth break in a row. That's Boston 11, Toronto 6. Tough to stop Cammy Groom on that cut. <laughs> tough to stop Cammy Groom anywhere. 
You know, Keith, Coach Filippo talked about how in their game against Riot when they were down, their game against Brute Squad when they were down, it was because they weren't utilizing their long game. And we have watched their game get shorter and shorter in this half. It is enabling Brute Squad to put more pressure on them. That coupled with the fact that there are some unforced throwing errors on the Sixers side, it is giving Brute Squad ample opportunity to break and they are doing just that. So another score for Groom to stretch the lead to five. Kami Groom likes to joke that she's the worst athlete in her family because both of her parents were college athletes. Her sister's a professional soccer player. Her sister Shay. All Cammy's done is won two national titles. A world championship as well. Poor Cammy. Cat Phillips initiates to Hannah Dawson looking for Phillips. Phillips, a professional athlete in Australia. She's adapted to play Australian rules football. That disc bobbled around, hit four or five different players. Sixers turnover. Just a beautiful put from Zoo. Going up line is Lee, Brute Squad pulling away. It was six all, now it's 12-6. Look at that shot from Zoo. It's been so delightful today and yesterday to watch her long puts. And you see the, the stack discipline downfield leaning into their system has paid dividends here in the second half for sure. Ma maintaining the defensive pressure, buying into the system, a recipe for success for Brute Squad. They're closing in on their third championship in five years. And you know, there's a lot of what if games you could play in Ultimate, but Brute Squad pretty darn close to winning two years ago and last year. 14-13 yeah. losses in the finals to Fury. If they win this, you could almost think they're two points away from five consecutive championships. How have they done it? Well, they have a lot of good players. That's first and foremost the truth about Brute Squad. They have strong players who buy into the, into the system. So Angela Zhu is perfectly happy to throw long puts. She's also happy to dump and swing. And that kind of selfless play enables teams to grow together and be consistently good. You bring your talents, you do what you do, but you don't try to do too much. And we saw what happened earlier, Coach Jackson said. He felt like his players were trying to do too much and it resulted in a shakier first half than we are seeing right now. I imagine Brute Squad is not going to let up. Ariel Jackson, a couple last second instructions as Werfley launches the pull. Root Squad's first title was 15-12. That was in 2015, our final year in Frisco after a three-year run when Nationals was in Texas. They pulled on Universe Point against Riot in 2016. Riot had a couple chances to win. Root Squad earned that title. And you know, whenever I mention Ariel Jackson that they could have won the last two years, he'll say, well, we could have easily lost that one to Riot. That disc twirled off the finger of Aaron Ray, who got the block for Brute. Barring a crazy comeback from Sixers, Megan, it's going to end a string of three years in a row when the women's final went to Universe.
We're fully with the disc. Huge chunk of yards for Aaron Ray. Werfley unwinds. Canning. Got it! It's Brute Squad's day. It's Brute Squad's year. Watch Werfley wind up for that throw. She cranked it to Canning, who had to turn on the Jets to make that layout grab. You see the disc pop up right there. Made it a much tougher grab, and Canning up to the task. Second year brood out of Northeastern. That's what happens if you do not put a mark on Jay Werfley fast enough. Oh, yeah. A moment she will remember. And another Brute Squad break. Five straight to start the half, six straight breaks overall, seven consecutive goals since Boudry hit Dos Santos to tie the game at six. Look at the difference from half to half right there. Fruit Squad has converted six of their last eight breaks. Opportunities. See if Sixers can get off the schneid here offensively. Good grab by Dawson with Sadler right on her tail. Marin. It's not like Brute Squad's that old, but it's also important to remember this Sixers team has a ton of youth. The Dos Santos sisters, 24 and 19, respectively. Jacobson, just 18. Caitlin Lee intercepts the swing. Sixers turnover. Nice find from Lee, popping it up over the stack to Groom. That was crafty, wasn't it? Courtney Verhollen picks up an assist. Another goal for Claire Trope. The Brute Squad scoring avalanche continues. What should have been an easy reset sailed too high. Lee was in the right spot. And here's this nice put from Lee. He had to put a lot of zip on that to get it up and over to Groom. Verhollen with a crafty little throw herself. Cool moment for Verhollen, who's dealt with a variety of injuries throughout her career. Originally from Las Vegas. Made semis as a member of the University of Colorado team back in 2010. Player trope just scratching the surface. She's 20. For Holland, one of the seven members of Brute Squad who are in their 30s. But half as many as Fury has. San Francisco Fury this year had 13 players on their roster in their 30s. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, the dynamic. They're so experienced, so seasoned. And athletically, you wouldn't think a lot of those players are beyond their athletic prime. It certainly doesn't seem that way. Tough grab made there by Kim Morin. 
Sixers need to score to stay alive. Cat Phillips flings it to the end zone, and that is caught for one. Sixers score, perhaps their final highlight in the final. Christine Jurichek makes the play. These are the nice kind of passes they've just been struggling to connect on this half. Slightly longer put from Phillips, stretches the field. Giving the Sixers an opportunity to put one more on the board in this game. That snaps an eight nothing run. Imagine that feels good. Get one on the board here in the second half. Phillips, the 29-year-old Aussie, ready to pull. Phillips played with Sixers last year at Nationals, and they saved her a spot this year as well. Said her pulls were one of the most valuable things that she brings. Just a little too much firepower from Brute Squad in this second half. Stingy defense and big throws, and this could potentially end it. But the D from Jerry Chuck as she leaves it all on the field. Brute Squad hasn't turned it too many times here in the second half. And Lewis. Unable to make the one-handed snag. Douglas will pick up. 12 yards away from another championship. Zoo on the goal line. Tulsa Douglas up the line. Angela Zoo makes the catch to put Boston Brute Squad back in the winner's circle in the women's division. Their third championship in five years. Redemption for missed opportunities against Fury the past couple. And Boston Brute Squad, the 2019 USA Ultimate National Champions. What a decisive and gratifying victory for Boston Brute Squad, who have found themselves in the finals the last three years, and this is the first time in those last three years they have been victorious. The second half, their system's on full display. You know it's pretty wild, Megan? These two teams played twice this weekend. Brute Squad bookends its games against Sixers on 9-1 runs. That Sixers, is impressive. Very competitive in that middle portion. The second half in pool play, the first half today. But Brute Squad, a tremendous effort. They don't win their region, but they win the nation. Their third national title, the trophies, heading back to Beantown. The USA Ultimate National Championships are brought to you by Discraft, home of the Ultra Star, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Now featuring an updated website to make ordering custom discs easier than ever. Visit Discraft.com for all your custom disc needs. Boston Brute Squad back on top in Women's Ultimate. 15-7 over Toronto Sixers, a game that was very tight in the first half at 6-all, but a 9-1 run to close it out. A couple champions standing by with Ian. Take it away.
Thanks, Evan. I am joined by Lauren Sadler and Coach Ariel Jackson. Lauren, let's start with you. If it's Championship Sunday, this decade basically, you're playing in it. What's going through your mind when you're waking up on a Sunday morning with a national championship on the line? Um, I was super nervous this morning, um, but it's, uh, I mean, it's always exciting and it's a really big honor to play in this game and I don't take it for granted. Coach Jackson, it's no secret that this season, regular season leading up to nationals, even the early stages of the series were a challenge for this team. You hadn't cruised in the way that you had in previous seasons. What did you change down the stretch that you think made the difference to capture this national championship? I think uh, where our struggles were, were a lot with our handler sets. Um, and so we really focused on addressing the issues there. And it was things that were subtle that we didn't even pick up in the moment. It was only after watching like tape and seeing that we weren't really doing things the way we wanted to do them. So we spent a lot of time focusing on that and getting that better. Uh, it still wasn't perfect, but it was good. It was, it was enough to, to hold it together. It was 7-6 just before halftime, and then you went on an 8 nothing run to bring things to 14-6. You eventually closed it out. What was the key to that run in the middle of this game? Um, we made a couple of adjustments in terms of which personnel we're playing in which direction. Um, so that was part of it. I think also just a refocus on bringing the defensive intensity that we wanted to um, and taking easier shots on offense. Lauren, you've competed with Scandal, with Riot, with Brute Squad, and now you've won championships with multiple teams. What does this championship mean to you personally? Um, this one is super special. I mean, I think this is the longest time I've played for a team. And um, I think having lost the previous two years, it was really awesome to win it for all of the people, the folks on our team that have like been on the team the last two years and like have been so close. I mean, it felt really awesome to like have Grinch win a fucking championship. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and um, and JoJo and like everyone that hadn't done it before. I mean, and every time you win, it's special. And um, this one, this one is really awesome. Coach, I got to throw the same question to you. You know, five straight appearances in the national championship game, so close the last two years, but now you're back on top. What's going through your mind? Um, I mean, it's, you know, we try to prepare every single year and it's, it's really hard to win a championship, obviously. It's really hard to even make it to semis or finals, right? And so I think a recognition of the work that we put in every year, that, we, that we've gotten there every year, is uh, you know, speaks really highly of the players and the team and the effort they're putting in. And you know, it's sometimes, you know, the past couple of years, something goes a different way. We don't win the one against Riot, or we win one of the ones against Fury. Um, so, you know, we just kind of had to keep grinding, keep pushing it, um, and eventually things would, would fall our way, but you got to put in the effort to, to be able to have that. Thank you both so much for your time. Congratulations. Time to go take some pictures with the trophy. Thanks, Evan. Thanks. Ian, Evan. Evan and Megan, back up to you. You'd think seven straight years in the final would, would make Lauren Sadler <laughs> a little more comfortable in that situation, and, but now she knows Ian, and we apologize for the language slip. Spirit Circle with two regional rivals meeting after the game. Sadler now a four-time champion with two different teams. Nicole Canning is a first-time champion, and she is the author of our Discraft Play of the Game. Really nice put from Juliana Werfele, and Megan, Nicole Canning did the rest. Hey man, when you see Werfele winding up, you know that it is time to turn on the Jets, and Canning does what she needs to do, and in the moment, on the big stage, makes an amazing grab. She was such a big addition last year defensively, coming up with several big blocks and a huge layout score for Canning in the championship game. The semi between Fury and Brute, like the last two finals, easily could have gone either way, but Brute Squad survives and then closes the championship, closes their season on a 9-1 run. What a tournament in the women's division. As I said at the top, redefining expectations going forward in many ways. But I'm not sure Brute Squad is gonna miss the finals anytime soon. They just seem to be getting better and better. Five straight years in the finals, including three national titles. One down, two to go on Championship Sunday at Club Nationals. Machine and Sockeye in the men's division coming up about 40 minutes from now. Congratulations to Boston Brute Squad on winning their third national title. Maria Toner and Megan Tormey 
Evan Leppler saying so long for now. Our coverage continues in a bit from San Diego. Brute Squad National Champs again.